<laughs> it's creepy, Sibs. That's my gift to you, my girl. Yeah. Richard bought it for me a couple days ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's creepy. It's creepy, Sibs. Like these stories. Yeah. So. So one story so is going to be amusing. I'm going to tell you the story about when I took my brother trick-or-treating <laughs> and what he did, and I had to jack him up. And the other one, I'm going to talk to you about Ouija boards. Stay away from Ouija boards, subs, because that they could be dangerous. And this time of year, a lot of college kids and like to get them and do things they really shouldn't be doing because they don't know what they're doing. Mm. Well, anyway, we're going to start off with, I took my brother and his two friends trick-or-treating. Mm. Now, this was way back when dinosaurs were still killing people subs <laughs> and my brother i'm six years older than him so he was about seven or eight which would have made me 13 or 14. so they needed somebody older obviously to take a trick or treat and so you know i said sure i'll do it it's no big deal you know so him and his two friends you know we they met at my mom's house we went on our merry way so we went from house to house to house, and it was fun. You know, I, I enjoyed, in those days, you know, the streets were crowded with trick-or-treaters. You know, and I liked to, you know, watch the little kids, and, you know, it was really exciting to see how happy they were to get the candy and show everybody what they got, and, you know, it was real fun. So we went on our block, you know, went down, we would go down one side of the street, go all the way down on three, four, five blocks, turn around and come back up. So that's what we would do. So this particular time, you know, like I said, my brother, my brother Michael, and his two friends, Michi and Spud. <laughs> so we're going down the street, you know, having a good time. And we go down to the next block. So we go up to this house, you know, it was an older house. It was pushed a little further back to the other. And you go up some steps, there's landing. You go up some steps, there's the porch. Okay, I went up as far as the landing. Because to, to go to the porch was only like three or four steps. Because the house isn't there anymore. It was demolished, oh, decades ago. So I stood there, you know, on the landing. And I'm looking at, you know, the kids' costumes, you know, going up and down the street. But when I heard the door open, I turned around and looked. And it was a really old lady. I mean, she was old, so... And she had a bag of apples. Now, I didn't pay it any attention. But apparently, my ignorant ass brother did. <laughs> so, you know, like I looked at her, you know, reaching at her bag. And then I turned back around, you know, to look at the kids. And then I turned around again. And my brother had come up to the edge of the porch. Now, the little old lady was still in the door. My brother stuck his hand in his bag, pulled out that apple, and said, I don't want no apple, and threw it in the street. <laughs> that ain't funny. <laughs> I was horrified. I was never so embarrassed in my life. Then the lady was still standing there. So him and his two egghead friends, they followed suit and threw their apples in the street. Now, he just was like, Come on, let's go to the next house. Like, it was nothing. Only problem is, he had to walk past me. I guess he must have either wasn't thinking about it or didn't care. I'm thinking, uh, he didn't care. As he walked past me, I snatched his ass up. By the front. And was shaking him all over the place like, subs, his arms and legs was going all over the place. Like Raggedy Ann? Yeah. <laughs> and I said, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> I don't want no apple. I said, do you know there's people out here that's poor that can't afford to give you all these candy bars that you want? I set him down, subs, and threw him back up the steps. I said, get up there and apologize. I said, how dare you embarrass me? How dare you? I slapped him all up in the head and everything. <laughs> And the little old lady, you know, she's leaning out her door. She's like, oh, honey, oh, oh, no, that's okay. I said, no, it's not. I said, he's going to come up there and apologize. 
And I told his two knucklehead friends, I said, well, and of course they're slinking, of course they gave me a wide berth <laughs> to go up there, you know, and tell everybody, well, I'm sorry, I didn't, oh, that's sorry. I said, no, it's not. I said, no, it's not. I said, they didn't have the right to do that. You know, she was just standing there looking at me, and yeah, huh? And when he came, he first he didn't want to come down the steps. He was looking at the lady and looking at me, but he knew he had to go home. So here he come down the stairs. He tried to give me a wide berth subs. That didn't work. I had long arms back then. <laughs> you know, like in the cartoon subs, when your arms stretch out and they come back and you got a victim? <laughs> That's what it was like. I stashed his ass up from the back subs. I was flinging him all in the hedges and everything. I was like, don't you ever, ever do anything like that again. I said, she's an old lady. She didn't have to give you anything. You appreciate what people do for you. Everybody don't have money. I was flinging him all over the place, subs. <laughs> he was crying. You know how they get there. You know how they're crying and you can't even understand what they're saying? I didn't care what he was saying. All I made out was, I'm telling mom. I said, you don't have to tell Ma, because I'm going to tell Ma. I was flinging him all around. So the house was a little ways down, and then I just flung him up the steps. I said, let me hear something else come out your mouth. I said, it's going to be worse for you next time. Tell it, Ma. I said, I don't care what you do. I said, but you better keep your mouth shut. I said, the only thing you better say is trick or treat and thank you. <laughs> I said, how dare you do something like that? You weren't raised like that. So, I didn't have no more trouble out of him, sir. So, <laughs> on the way home, of course, you know how kids are, you know. We sit up there and we pet each other. You know, once once we get beat up and stuff, you know how we do? We put our arm around each other. Or, and that's what his friends were doing. <laughs> I didn't care. So, when we got up to our block, of course... They're going to run up ahead of me because he's going to tell mom on me. I just took my time, I, you know. So when I got to the bottom of the steps, I could hear him. You couldn't, like my mom, I could hear she couldn't understand what he was saying because he was crying. Now, so as my brother is a Marine. He was. He was a career Marine. Now he's about six foot five, about 250 pounds. Back then, he was real small, you know, and we really weren't allowed to hit him because he was he was really small. And he wanted to be big and tall, you know, and husky like my mother's brothers were. And he didn't think he was ever going to be big like them. But eventually over time, you know, my mother's family, all the men are tall and they're big. But he wasn't at that time, no, he was little and puny. You know, he was only about seven, eight years old. So I come in the house. And, you know, my mom was like, here, come here. So I go in there, and she said, what happened? And I told her. And she said, well, what did you do? I said, I flung him all over the place. I said, because he embarrassed me with that old woman. And she said, well, you shouldn't have did that. You just should have turned him around and said, okay, that's it. Trick or treat is over. And brought him back home. She said, I would have dealt with him. I said, no. I said, because once I dealt with him, I said, the problem was over. <laughs> and she said, no. She said, no, you know you're not allowed to hit him, which we weren't. He was the youngest, you know, and he was the smallest, you know, so we really weren't allowed to hit him. You didn't hit him. You are just slinging him around. Yeah, I was just putting him around. <laughs> but apparently, I mean, he made out like, you know, we was back with the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> apparently, you know, he was on the rack or some shit. He was getting crucified. Yeah. Uh-huh. He was being impaled or something. I don't know. I don't know. She couldn't understand a word. And, of course, like I said, he was only seven or eight. So he ran to my mom, and, of course, he buried his head in her stomach. Oh, it was just horrible, sir. I was just looking at him. You know, I just shook my head, you know, went on about my business. She said, now, next time he do something like that, you know, she said, you just bring him back home. She said, I'll deal with him. She said, there is no excuse for that. And she looked at him, she said, I can't believe you acted like that. I didn't raise you to be that way. And then she gave the, the same speech that I did. You know, the people, not everybody has money. And he ought to be glad she gave him everything because she doesn't owe him anything. She was just being nice. And, of course, back then, a bag of apples cost like 59 cents. 
and you get a big the big bags that you have now that cost like two three dollars yeah. were 59 cents back then but still you know that's 59 cents she could have put towards maybe a bill or something she didn't have to do that I, oh i told mom i said you know i said i was never so embarrassed in my life <laughs> she said well if i'd have been there i said he wouldn't have did it if you were there i said that's why he thought he could get away with it him and his friends you know how kids you know give each other courage <laughs> you know, and I no, I didn't go tell the other's mother. No, I didn't. I didn't tell on them. Oh, they got murdered. So I didn't say anything because they really. And back in the day, they didn't play that. You didn't disrespect old people. No, no. Mm -mm. My mother didn't play it either. You know, but he's all in there substance. <laughs> 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 Yeah, now, Subs, we're going to have a 
serious discussion about Ouija boards. Now, when we were kids, yeah, we had a Ouija board, but we never paid it that much attention because it was boring. You know? <laughs> yeah, it, you know, we really didn't know. You know, we were like, well, what do you do with it? You know, so after a while, we got bored with it. So we got thrown in a closet and never really, I think she must have gave it away or something. We, my mom didn't throw our toys away. She, she, as we got older, they went down to the other kids, um, cousins or whatnot. But I think the Ouija, well, I think she threw that out. <laughs> Not really sure. But I don't remember seeing it again after maybe a little, a little past that Christmas. This was like way back in the late 60s, early 70s. Something, this is a long time ago. I don't yes. know what ever happened to that. Well, anyway, like I said, it never really held our interest because we had other other things to do. Back when uh, witches yeah. were getting burned at the stake. Yeah, uh-huh. Joan of Arc. Yep. Joan of Arc. <laughs> yep. So, I had friends who had other friends who weren't always the sharpest tacks in the box. And they would mess around with Ouija boards. So, everybody told them, now, Ouija boards, if you don't know what you're doing, subs, you can open a gate and bring something into this world you can't get rid of. And they're not pleasant. They, they're they not people. They've never been people. They're not human. And they will lie, and they will deceive, and they will trick you into saying it's okay for them to come. Don't mess with Ouija boards. Because you may think you're talking to your mom or your grandma or a sibling who passed away, and that may not be who you're talking to. It may be something else who knows what you're trying to do and will take advantage of that. And once you bring something here, you're in danger because it knows what you're trying to do. And keep in mind, they're not human. They've never been human. And they don't care about you. Now, I had a girlfriend named Monica. I have two stories to tell. One has a happy ending. The other one does not. My girlfriend Monica, when she was young, she said she had a Ouija board. And her and her brother, they were trying to talk to somebody. I don't remember exactly who. But she said, you know, once her brother had gone off to bed, he was older than her. So he had went on with his friend. And they, you know, didn't think no more of it. But she said that night, something woke her up. She said, and her bedroom was sit situated at the end of the hall. When you came up the steps, there was a bathroom. Then it was a long hallway. And her bedroom was at the end of the hallway. So she could look out her door and see the bathroom at the end of the hall. She said, all of a sudden, she started seeing a tall, dark thing, looked like a shadow. She said that it was always, like, it would always be coming towards her and then stop at the end of her bed. But it never came any further. She said, but every time she saw it, it did the same thing every night. It would, it would do the same exact thing. And she said she didn't see it until she was messing with the Ouija board. So she said, the next day, you know, she told her brother about it. She said, because she didn't do it at first, you know, because she thought, you know, maybe she was dreaming it or something. She said, but it kept happening. So she said, you know, she talked to her brother about it. And, of course, you know, he didn't believe her. So he said, okay, well, I'll spend a night in your room. Because that's where the Ouija board was. It was under her bed. And it, the, whatever it was would only come to the foot of the bed. It didn't go any further. So after they figured that out, you know, he figured, well, he'll stay in her room with the Ouija board to see what's going on. And he saw the same thing. That it would start at the end of the hall. And next thing you know, it's, uh, it's towards them at the foot of the bed where, where the Ouija board was pushed up under the bed. So they, they decided, they never did tell their parents. Why? I don't know. Maybe they thought they wouldn't believe them. They probably wouldn't. I don't know. Maybe they thought they were protecting them. I mean, I don't know. But they said that when the next day, 
you know, that they waited till, you know, their parents had gone to work and everything. And so he went out in the yard. See, in those days, so you put your garbage in 55-gallon drums. And the garbage man would come, and they would lay out a burlap sack and dump that bin into the sack. And then take the sack to the garbage truck. It's nothing like it was, it's nothing like it is now, back then. It was nothing like that. So they went and got one of the 55-gallon um, drums and took it as far away from the house as they could. Because they lived like on the outskirts of the city. So they had a little bit of land, you know, where they you could burn stuff on. So they took it down there. And she said they set it on fire. And they sat there to make sure, you know, that it burned out and everything. Until there was nothing left, you know, they just kept burning it until... It, you know, it burns out because they had put wood in there, you know, and everything else. So she said after that, they never saw it again. She said, but they never bothered with a, with a Ouija board ever again after that. And she said she never, she never saw anything. She said because her brother would sleep in a room with her, you know, on the floor. You know, they would, just in case, you know. Now, I don't know what they would have done if it had continued, but, you know, thank goodness it never did. You know, so that was that one story. The next story is a tragedy because people don't believe you when you tell them, don't mess with Ouija boards because you don't know what you're doing. And if you don't follow through with what's being told for you to do, it will take your life. And it doesn't care how. All it knows is you got the better of it or you thought you did. And it's going to show you you did Okay, there, I have three friends that used to hang together all the time. And they had a Ouija board. And everybody was telling them, leave Ouija boards alone. I don't even know if they still sell Ouija boards. Yeah, but they if, they, if they do, don't get one. Yeah, don't, they're on, they're don't, on Amazon. Don't buy <laughs> any for your kids or your grandkids. Leave Ouija boards alone. Ouija boards are not harmless. Get an eight ball. And like a, yeah, get an eight ball. <laughs> And like I said, this year, you know, a lot of college students, you know, they'll get them, um, you know, for Devil's Night and all that crazy shit. And they don't know what they're doing. You see a lot of this, you know, in abandoned hospitals and abandoned houses. You know, what do you see? Pentagrams and all that shit. These people don't know what they're doing. They don't have the slightest clue what they're doing. And a lot of them are so stupid, they actually have blood sacrifices. They'll kill dogs, cats, birds, squirrels. You, you, once you do something like that, Subs, you're lost. You are lost. Because you can't do that. But once you have, you're tainted. And it's just a matter of time before something happens to you. Because you know we're forbidden to do things like that. We are forbidden to contact the dead. That's something you don't do. If they, if they need to get in contact with you to tell you something, they'll come to you in your dream. You don't try to conjure them because you don't know what, what you're going to get. Like I said, it will lie to you. It will deceive you. It will do whatever it can to get into this world. And then what you're going to do? So don't do it. Well, anyway, like I said, back in the day, there were three friends who didn't listen. When everybody was telling them, no, you don't mess with Ouija boards because you can't control whatever's coming through. And it doesn't care about you. It'll make you think it's a long lost friend, it's your mom, it's your dad, it's your grandparents, it's a sibling you may have passed before you. It's not. It's something else, something dangerous that you should not be dealing with. And it'll tell you anything to come through, but once it's through, that's it for you. Well, anyway, they wouldn't listen to anybody. So, everybody knows where the abandoned houses are in the town or so-called haunted houses. I mean, there are some haunted houses. Everybody knows where there's the haunted house. Everybody knows that. So, they decided to go into this abandoned school on Devil's Night with the Ouija board, like, a, like idiots. And apparently, they tried to summon something. We never quite found out what. And whatever it wanted,
wanted, it wanted them to do a blood sacrifice, which means to kill a, kill a dog, a stray dog, cat, whatever. These fools did it. Now, then it was able, they were able to communicate with the Ouija board, which they should never have done. They should never have done any of that. The minute, whatever it was, asked for a blood sacrifice, they should have stopped right then and then and just set the board on fire and went on about their business. But for some strange reason, they decided not to. They decided to carry it out, much to their chagrin later on. Okay. So they did this, and whatever it was, it kept wanting more from them. And until eventually, I guess somebody told their parents or older siblings or something, but whatever, somebody found out what they had been doing and burned up the Ouija board. So they never completed whatever was expected of them. They, didn't, they never got to because the board was destroyed, and they were never allowed to get any more. You know, because like I said, back in those days, everybody's mother knew everybody. So everybody found out what they were doing. Those things are not harmless. You may think they are, but they're not. Well, anyway, time went on. You know, I guess they forgot about it. Only problem with that stuff, whatever it was, didn't forget that they had betrayed it. I guess it figured it, they, they betrayed it. Whatever. Okay, we got older, everybody graduated school, okay, the same year that they graduated, or a couple of years later, each one of them died a terrible death in, in car crashes. One of them was actually burned alive up in the strip district. His car was hit head on, and they couldn't get him out. The other girl... And that was a guy. His name was, was Sam. And the other girl, the one girl, she was in a car crash head on. She was decapitated. The windshield just, I mean, her head was bounced around in the back seat. The other one was just hit head on and the car just exploded. But these all happened over a period of, I'll say three years apart. They're, they're all within within three years. All this happened. Everybody, you know, everybody that knew was like, well, that's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. True story. You know, you don't mess with things that are beyond your understanding. And that's what they were doing. Even though they were being warned not to do it. Because, you know, we oh, we know what we're doing. We can handle it. No, you can't. These things have been around for thousands of years. You've only been here a few. You're not going to outsmart it. You're not going to outthink it, although that has been done. Yeah, evil can be defeated, but only when good is very, very careful. But evil can be defeated. And evil has, is afraid of something. Everything that's evil is afraid of something. It's not like they're not. Because they are. Oh yeah, they're not indestructible. They, have, they fear too. But it's on a different level from ours. But they still have fear. They're not indestructible. They may not be able to die the way we understand it. But they can be conquered, yeah. But unless you know what the hell you're doing, you're not going to be the one to conquer them. So, just stay away from Ouija boards. I'm yeah. If you have friends with Ouija boards, stay the hell away from that. Because they don't know what they're doing. Now, I don't care what they tell you, they don't know what they're doing. Now, I just gave you three examples of somebody who thought they knew what they were doing, and where are they now? And they were all dead before they were 21 years old, 21, 22 years old. They were all dead. All because they didn't listen. You know, there's things in this world, stuff that we're not supposed to mess with and we're not supposed to see. They're supposed to be left alone. They're here for a purpose. 
But if you're not the purpose they're here, just stay away from stuff like that. Because they don't, I mean, they don't have pity or remorse. They don't care about that. They're not here for that. They're here for a specific purpose. And it is not to do you good. That is not to say that there are not forces here that are good and will help you. Of course there is. There's always a balance. They're not, the able only goes but so far before good will step in and say, okay, that's enough. It, it has to stay balanced. There's always a balance. But sometimes to get to that balance, unfortunately, there's collateral damage. You know, because... Evil can be defeated, but good has to be very, very careful and know what they're doing. And sometimes you have to make a horrible sacrifice and able to defeat it. But, I mean, if that's what it takes, you have to do what you have to do at that moment. But, you know, just, you know, live your life and do the right thing. I mean, are we going to make the right decisions all the time? Of course not. We're not supposed to. We're supposed to learn from our mistakes. But some things, some mistakes should never have been done. They could have been easily avoided, but the person wouldn't listen. And in that case, then you have to deal with the consequences. And unfortunately for you, the consequences are something you would never in your wildest nightmares have imagined. Stay in your lane. Or you end up just like them. All because they wouldn't listen about a, a, a toy they thought was harmless that turned out not to be harmless. So I think that we can't have a Ouija board? No. <laughs> no Ouija boards. So that's my warning to you subs. You know, take it for what it's worth. You know, or, you, you know, if time goes by, well, I told you. <laughs> I told you so. Yeah, I told you so. <laughs> but I got got my little lantern here, my little spook yeah. lantern. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, with, with my, my little panther ears. Yeah. Yeah. You're spooky. Yeah. So we'll end on that note. Yeah. And one more shot of the hourglass. Your time is running out. It's good with the Ouija board. Yeah. <laughs> Probably what they heard, Sibs. Yeah. So on that note, till yeah. next time. Bye, Sibs. Adios. <laughs> yeah.